Okay, so I've been blethering on about what, what spy satellites can see because there's a lot of rot about spy satellites in movies. That's right. I mean, the number of ones where they watch people inside buildings through the roof um, <laughs> as, as fuzzy red block. I mean, infrared imaging is pretty good, but it can't see through walls. No, that's right, yeah. And even if you can do the mid infrared and pick up your heat signature, you're only going to be able to see it as a 10 meter blob. So you could be it, I could be it, uh, or something outside could be it. But anyway, let's go with visible light and what detail can they actually see? I mean, according to spy movies, almost everything. Is that really realistic? Yeah, see, that's the thing is we can actually calculate what is the physical possible limit. So let's imagine, no one reads newspapers anymore. Let's imagine they want to check out your mobile phone. You're, okay. you're looking at some secret plan to invade somewhere or, you know, you're Dr. Evil and you have your secret layer. Can we see that from space? Well, that means we would need to see about five millimeters in order to make out what it is. We're not just want to say, hey, he's holding a phone, but what is on that phone. And five min millimeter resolution is pretty, pretty, pretty tough. So if we rearrange this, that means we need to get to five millimeters here. Now we're gonna put our telescope at low Earth orbit like Hubble because it's easy. That's where most of the spy satellites are anyway. And that's that will be the best images you can see. That's right. And you want it to be as low as possible to give the best possible chance of actually reading someone's phone screen. That's right. But you can't do too low, as you said, because then you burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. So if we stick it at 400 kilometers and we're gonna look in the greeny orange colors, we would need a 36 meter telescope in low Earth orbit. Okay. That's pretty big. Yes. We haven't even built one that big on Earth. Yes. So you're now talking about something that is over 10 times bigger than the Hubble Space Telescope, yep. which is only 2.4 meters, operating in a way that it can see your mobile phone. It probably just isn't going to happen. And again, this is, as we've seen, usually better than what is actually happening. This is the physical best limit. The reality is always a little bit worse. Yes, so they're not going to be reading your phone screen over your shoulder from space. And probably not no. anytime soon. And probably not time ever. Um, and anyway, there are almost certainly better ways to hack your phone than doing this. <laughs> exactly. And this is always the thing is that people always say, well, what could the Hubble Space Telescope, if you pointed at the Earth, couldn't you see detail? Well, again, the Hubble Space Telescope is only 2.4 meters. And if we're looking at in the green... The diameter, not that's the right, length. The, the diameter, that's right. The diameter, that's right. The diameter is all that matters, you're right. And it's at 540 kilometers. And if we're looking at our greeny orange color, we can only see 16 centimeters. Now, that's, that's good, but that's not dramatically better than what we've explored before. Well, you probably go down to 400 nanometers. It might bring that down to 10 centimeter resolution, which is what we've already talked about as being the, the limit the of limit. some exactly. commercial satellites. So, you know, the Hubble Space Telescope, as powerful as it is, it's powerful because it's looking at far away things, not necessarily far away things that are big, not things that are close and small. Yeah. And, and the, the reasons that limit it to this are pretty much fundamental laws of physics. That's right. No matter clever engineering is going to get around these things. Because even when people have fit around it, like the James Webb Space Telescope, which is recently launched. Now, this is six and a half meters wide. And, you know, Paul, you said they can't probably build a mirror that's bigger than four to fit in a rocket. And, and you're right. They couldn't. So they folded the thing in. And this has been the biggest technological challenge that... Yeah. I think NASA is open. We're talking ever you know, 10 billion US dollars for something like this. Yeah. And that's, that's quite a bit of change, even for military. That's right. And it still was only six and a half meters wide. So even if we put our six and a half meters wide, but it's also operating in the mid infrared, you're going to get only a meter resolution if you look at Earth. So you're still with a $10 billion telescope looking at a very specific color of light still not going to get that much better. And in fact, the James Webb Space Telescope was not in low Earth orbit, it's white at Lagrange point, so it would definitely not get anything like it, much, 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 much worse than this. That's right. So at 1.6 million kilometers, you're going to see a resolution of three kilometers. So, you know, it's great to build these things that big, and there's very good reasons, as we're about to explore for astronomy, but the reality is you're not going to get that spy satellite movie resolution here on Earth. Yeah, better for the drone. Better for the drone. <laughs>